A year has passed, a year with lots of new basses, pedals and amps. And in this video I want to show you what I like the most as a professional bass reviewer. Or let's say here's a list of the stuff we had the most fun with this year. Uh, let's get started. Number one, the new Ampeg Venture Series amps and cabinets. I'm still surprised they simply took an SGT DI pedal, threw it at a few power amps and speakers to see what sticks. That's at least how I imagine these sort of things are designed. However, they created something wonderful. A rig that weighs next to nothing, is super versatile and sounds like an Ampeg. Sounds like a few different Ampegs, actually. Love it! Next, uh, number two, the Sandberg Florence Bass. <laughs> I don't fully understand how I don't own one. I work for Sandberg as an artist relations manager and I'm the guy who actually came up with this bass. Uh, now I remember I already have too many basses, that's why. The Florence bass is short scale with a single humbucker and the neck precision and a lot of low end. It's very lovely, check it out. However, there's also number three, the FKT Audio Fretless Pedal. No one asked for this, no one expected this and a pedal for fretless players seems oddly specific, but then we got to hear it. What an amazing pedal, it's exactly what a fretless player would want. MIDI cue, chorus and a bit of reverb and yes, that's how we Germans count to three. Number four, modern vintage jazz basses. These weren't just a lot of fun, the video also went viral for a moment. <laughs> These are very traditional builds, but with so much love for the little details, I'm a huge fan of this brand. Number five is a pedal that can do so many things, we had to make two videos. It's the H90 by Eventide. Not exactly the pedal I expect to see on everyone's board anytime soon. But if you love to play and experiment with complex effect combinations, there's nothing like the H90 on the market. Number six, well, one spot just has to go to Harley Benton. They celebrated their 25th anniversary in 2023 and here's one of the two bases they released for this occasion. <laughs> Harley Benton just keeps killing it. They're getting better every year and I can't wait to see what they're coming up with next. This past year was also the year where a legend returned to the industry. This is number seven, the new Line 6 DL4 Mark II. <laughs> And 
this year we finally got the long anticipated 9 volt pedal board friendly version with all the old sounds included and just as many new ones. I love this, I even got one for myself. But now comes something that was just impressive on every level. Number 8. This video just came out a few weeks ago but the comment section is still on fire. <laughs> Apparently this is a controversial bass, but as someone who actually got to play one, let me tell you, there's nothing controversial about it. Yes, it's expensive, but also insanely good sounding. It's of course the Budgie Guitars Amorita Michael League signature bass. All I can say is if you ever get to play one, absolutely do it and don't worry, the woodworms are dead and gone. And to all the haters out there, uh, just because someone pursues an idea that you don't understand, doesn't mean it's a bad idea. This is one of the best sounding basses I've ever played and I'm doing this year professionally for over 20 years now, so end of story. Number 9 is the Tidal Wave by Joyo. I got to review a whole bunch of Joyo pedals this year, but this was my favorite. It sounds great and you can get it at a fraction of the price of what other brands tend to charge for something like this. The Tidal Wave was especially enjoyable because I think it's the perfect middle ground. You can do low and high gain sounds and it has a fabulous sounding impulse response or like a cabinet simulation on the DI out. Clearly a winner. Before we come to my favorite piece of gear of the year, here are some honorable mentions, some things that probably should have made it in this list. The two notes Opus. If you want a professional IR solution for gigging, this is the perfection. The Burgantino Super Pre. It's digital and programmable, but so simple and so kept on focus that even old school players can get behind it. And then there was the Gem Pedals Bass the World Edition Red Mug, uh, which is just my favorite drive pedal as a Bass the World Edition. But now let's finally come to the most favorite thing, at least for me, that we got to review this year. This happened fairly recently. I went to Prague for a bass show and there were a bunch of Czech luthiers there. Amongst them, Aviator guitars and they brought this Jetstream 6 string multiscale bass, which just blew me away. This is easily the most comfortable six string multiscale bass out there. It didn't feel like a six string at all. I wouldn't be surprised if a bass very similar to this showed up later this year at the studio to become some sort of a permanent resident. Let's see. But honestly, I can't really mention Aviator without mentioning this bass. The Redbird guitars Gemini 30, which I discovered on the same day at the same event as the Aviator. This is a short scale made from reclaimed centuries old woods centuries. And it, it sounds in place just absolutely wonderful. The only issue is the video isn't out yet. That's why this bass didn't get a proper spot in this list. Even it absolutely deserves one. Stay tuned for the review and to see and hear this much more in future videos because this stays here. This is mine. What a double standard considering my words earlier in the Sandberg part, but that's just how it is. And that's it. Uh, thanks for following our channel and here's to another year of more base reviews here on Base the World. Bye bye. Base the world.